Hello internet world, welcome. Welcome to a new video on the Geek Noise channel. In today's video I'm bringing you my review of the D-Link Full HD Outdoor Wi-Fi Spotlight Camera. Full disclosure, D-Link very kindly sent this in free of charge for this video. They haven't asked to pre-approve the content or for me to say anything in particular. And of course no money has changed hands uh, in in uh, exchange for this review. This is going to be my opinion of the camera, how I found it and also a run through of all of the features. Let's get on with the review. So as always we jump straight into it and take a closer look at this product. Uh, as I mentioned this is the uh, D-Link Full HD uh, outdoor Wi-Fi spotlight camera. Uh, it's a really nice looking piece of kit. Uh, the model number is the DCS8627LH it is packed full of some really great features. Let's run through the, the specs first of all before we look at the camera, sort of the physical attributes of the camera. Uh, this is IP65 weatherproof. It offers up true full HD 1080p video and we come on to video quality uh, very shortly. Uh, it's also got advanced motion detection. It's also got uh, person detection as well. It's got glass break detection, it's got a built-in speaker and siren. And of course, because it's got a built-in speaker, it does, does offer up uh, two-way audio, so you can speak to people through the camera. Day and night vision, really good night vision as well. Uh, this has in fact got a spotlight built into it, and that is a 400 lumen LED spotlight. So low power in the fact that it doesn't use up too much energy, but very high power when it comes to the actual output. And it really does light things up beautifully at night time. It also offers up both cloud and local recording. That's a very important feature on here, cloud and local recording. Uh, so of course you run this with an app. The app is available on the iOS app store or on the Google Play store. This is also Alexa compatible as well. And the app that you'd use is the My D-Link app. So this actually connects to the wall via this uh, bracket. This is on a ball joint and you've got the two screw holes here and you use wall plugs if you're going into masonry or, or you can just use the screws direct into wood if you're uh, putting this direct onto a wood mounting surface. Do bear in mind that you have to drill a hole big enough to put this through and I would say you'd probably need about a 12 millimeter drill bit to, to drill through, maybe a little bit bigger, but roughly about 12 millimeters. You get a nice long cable on this end and you also get a nice long cable on the AC adapter as well. So uh, really good length to the cables, which makes it a lot easier to install. What I really like about this is that when the hole is drilled through the wall, obviously you're going to put some sort of sealant around the hole to stop any water ingress. But once this is mounted onto the wall, the cable is hidden. So if an intruder does see the camera, they can't cut the cable. That's really important. I would probably use security screws on this, just as an extra tip. Uh, round on the bottom here, if I take this off, we have got a micro SD card slot just underneath that rubber waterproof cover. Uh, that allows you to do the uh, local recording. So a lot of you, when I'm showing you these, uh, these security cameras, a lot of you ask, well, what's the point of having cloud recording? Because if the internet goes down, then you're not gonna get any footage. You need local recording. Then a lot, lot of you ask, well, what happens if you've got local recording and your camera gets stolen? then you're still gonna have cloud recording, of course. If you lose the SD card, you've still got cloud recording. So you've got the best of both worlds. Some of you say, well, what happens if the, the intruder smashes the camera up or you know yanks the camera down? That can happen with any security system. What I would suggest, uh, and what I recommend to people asking me about how to set up their home security, is if you've got an area of your building you're really concerned about, have more than one camera. So have perhaps two cameras at different angles then at least if one camera does get damaged or stolen or broken or becomes faulty and isn't working or isn't recording for some reason, at least you've got a secondary backup camera. So back to taking a closer look at this. We've got the, um, the, the various sensors on the front. We've got the little microphone pickup. We've also got a really good lens on here as well. It's a nice design. It's not too obtrusive. It's a, a reasonable size for a security camera uh, and 
being white, it should blend into most exterior decor because most houses are decorated in a lighter colour. I haven't seen any additional sort of sleeves available for this, uh, but you could probably get a plastic wrap if you wanted to change the colour uh, on the camera itself. So, installation, very easy. Set up in the app, very easy. The actual quality of the video is exceptional. Really detailed, nice quality, full colour, full HD video. And also, at night time, because if you've got this really high power 400 lumen spotlight, Again, exceptional quality video at night time as well. We've got advanced motion detection in here as well. Uh, it uses passive infrared sensor, uh, really accurate detection. And also, you've got much smarter detection as well. So it will only detect people rather than pets all the time. Uh, there's also an algorithm built in which detects the sound of breaking or shattering glass. I mentioned there's a built-in speaker and also a siren. That siren goes off at around about 100 decibels. So really good features built into here. Uh, because it's wired, you haven't got the chance of wireless or Wi-Fi dropouts on this. It is a little bit more difficult to install than a full wireless camera. But of course, uh, you haven't got to deal with Wi-Fi issues. So the fact that it's hardwired, really very, very good indeed. Uh, you haven't got to deal with any sort of power issues for the battery running out. The, the actual camera itself is still like um, a, a wireless connection to your router, uh, but you're getting a much more, what I experienced, a much more powerful signal between this and your wireless devices. So a wireless camera that is powered, uh, sort of hardwire powered, I think offers up really uh, good sensible solution. And the fact that it's got this uh, micro SD card to capture the footage locally as well. I think it was a really good decision on D-Link's part. The app's really nice to use. The camera's really good. Quality of the video footage, really good. I can highly recommend it. That's it for the review. You can uh, pick up one of these by checking out the links down in the video description. So please do check out those links. Uh, there's also a link in the video description to the D-Link website, so please do check that out as well. Uh, thanks for tuning in, everyone. I can see plenty of you in the live chat again. We've got Sea Winds, uh, Mr. Vlogger again, thank you, and also Andy, thanks for tuning in again. Uh, Thomas and also Raymond. Uh, Raymond's coming with a question. So before I just, I'll just finish up the review a little bit more and I'll come back to your question, Raymond. Uh, do check out those links to the D-Link website and the links to where you can buy this particular camera. It is a really good choice. I was really impressed with it. Uh, one more thing before I take Raymond's question. I mentioned this in the previous video, uh, new microphone, a new sort of setup as well. The iMac has moved. Uh, please do let me know what you think of both the video quality and the audio quality. In a couple of weeks, the video quality is going to go up again. So do subscribe. If you're not already subscribed, please do subscribe. And if you're a regular viewer, please do make sure you're tuning in for all the videos. I will announce when the new camera arrives. So do stay tuned for that. Uh, Raymond is uh, saying, what is your main camera for commercial projects in 2020? Are you still using the GH5? Uh, sorry uh, for the out of topic question. No, all questions are good. Love the question. Uh, my main camera at the moment is the Nikon Z6. Um, that's been my main camera for a while, uh, but I have got a new camera coming in. And I'm not going to reveal what it is now, but it is a switch to a different manufacturer. I still use this one here, uh, which is the Z50 for the overhead shots. And for my main sort of um, recordings, the Sony AX53 uh, for the main uh, main camera that you're watching me on now. Uh, but for my commercial product projects, the Nikon Z6 is my main camera at the moment. But that will be changing very, very shortly. Um, I haven't invested as much as I have in previous years in camera equipment because I've mainly switched over to live broadcasts and at the current time uh, a lot of my commercial work is a little bit less than it was but that seems to gradually be picking up again so um, I do lots of video outside of, of YouTube of course and of course Raymond's watched for a long long time so he knows that I do commercial video as well. Uh, that is it for uh, this video. Uh, I just noticed Gadget Dad come in with a comment saying the Sony A7S III. Uh, very good guess, but uh, not 
the Sony a7S III, although I wish it was. If I ordered one now, I would probably be waiting until Christmas. One of the most popular cameras, that is, of 2020, and it looks amazing. Uh, that is it for this video. Nice to uh, chat with you all. Thank you very much for tuning in live. I'll see you all in another video very, very soon.